Hey everybody and welcome to Brick Vault. In front of me here is the Indoraptor Rampage set from the latest Jurassic Worlds line. It has the uh, Indoraptor. You can see the large black and very, very evil, slender, quick. Uh, basically, it's, it's, like a, it's like a raptor but, but on, on, on roids or something. It's a really big, evil looking dinosaur. Um, also, by the way, the full name of this set is the Indoraptor Rampage at Lockwood Estate. That is the actual full name, and this is the Lockwood Estate, I would assume. Uh, kind of a fun bit of building that makes up the stonework. It almost looks like adobe, and the red roof could maybe be an indication that that is sort of a red tiled roof. I don't really know, but this set does come in at 1,019 parts. It sells for $129.99 US dollars or Euro, depending. It's actually the same distribution, and it comes with six minifigs. The detailing for them is actually pretty fun. We get some very interesting looking characters, and let's start with them first. Let's start off with Maisie Lockwood first, just because I think the print for her torso piece is probably the best one from this set. So far as I know, I think it is just exclusive to her. I like the stripe detailing that goes along the shirt that is perpendicular to the detailing that makes up the jacket along the front of the torso. There's a little bit of printing that goes along towards the back. She has short red hair and a pretty standard print for the childlike face. Gunner Eversol is also a pretty unique character. You can see he's got a suit that has a little bit of, I guess, plaid or checkered detailing that goes along the top. A very funny looking expression on his face. He doesn't look like the happiest of campers or the nicest of characters, but I think that actually kind of goes for him. It's a really good looking, sort of complete looking character. I like the way he has the sort of orange comb over and he comes with a gavel, which I'm not sure if he's gonna be using as a weapon in this situation, but I somehow, I just like this character a lot. I think he's really funny looking. And then next up here is Ken Wheatley, who's got what looks like more tranquilizer darts that are wrapped up in his ammo belt that goes along his chest and his back. The back almost looks like a quiver of sorts. It kind of widens out there, but it's a really nice looking torso print. He has a somewhat not very happy expression on his face, and you can definitely tell he is an older character with the gray eyebrows. Now, I guess I can show the main character again. This is Owen. He is in most of the Jurassic World sets, and the print for him here is pretty standard. Uh, this version of Owen pretty much comes out uh, and I think four other sets, so very common. The expressions on his face are certainly a better update compared to the first version of this character that came out in the last wave of Jurassic World sets. And then we also do get this version of Claire in another set. She has a pretty good set of expressions. I think that might be the strongest aspect of this minifig and also just in general I think this rugged looking uh, jacket print that shows the female hips, the negative space there, is a slightly less common print and I like that we're just getting more of that. And anyways, here's the last minifig. I'd put him at basically the most conventional of characters. He's got a really, really basic suit print, not too much detailing. We've seen this expression on so many minifigures face before. He's basically just a, a plain old not very nice guy. He's gonna be what looks like almost a grunt of a bad guy. He's got a nice little wavy hairpiece though, I have to give him that. And then let's see what these guys are all up against. This is the Indoraptor. I have a feeling this is gonna be the biggest and baddest, or at least the main evil villainous dinosaur from the film. As of making this, the movie actually hasn't come out yet. But very interesting, he has these rubbery hands. The, the fingers themselves, I think, are just a little bit too thin and pointy for Lego to to say that, that they should be molded in harder plastic, harder ABS, and uh, he's got a specially molded head that looks really creepy. I like the spines that come along the head. He really does look like an evil dinosaur. He's got the red eyes that come in and just a little bit of green and orange line detailing that goes all the way to the tail. The tail is bendy here. You can see where it kind of turns into more rubbery plastic right along that line. And just like the rest of the dinosaurs, the legs and arms can come out. They just pin in with regular pins. So you can switch, mix and match dinosaur legs and arms if you'd like. These arms too are a bit different compared to uh, the, other, the other dinos. This is a specially molded dino arm, which basically isn't the case for any of the other creatures. And yeah, you can also take the tail off. So lots of articulation. I mean, it goes around all the way. The mouth has a really good snapping, opening, and closing function. And in general, I would say this, this is a very good, bad looking dinosaur. 
Now this set is also one of two sets that comes with blue. I'm gonna assume this is blue, it's definitely blue. He's got the markings that show blue. Um, and yeah, he too has a pretty good little snapping jaw function. I love the color juxtaposition because it's not just orange, but there's also a little bit of yellow deeper within the eye. So it goes black, yellow, orange, black outlining around the blue, then the dark blue. That is just so many colors, just, just, just mishmashed into a very small space. And I do like it when the detail printing gets, gets that detailed, so to speak. So there are the legs too, they also come off just like the rest of the guys, the arms as well. The head spins around, but it does not, well actually it does come off, but it doesn't articulate up and down like some of the larger dinosaurs. I do like blue. I think this is a really good looking Velociraptor. Just in general, the mold is great, but also the color detailing really is quite unique and he's a really cool looking dino. And now that we've got sort of the stage set with the characters and the dinos, this is the Lockwood Estate. I have to say pretty good detailing considering it's such a simple build. We have some basic banister parts here. A lot of these very long cylindrical pieces that make up just, just some small columns. This is nice. I really like that we get this uh, two by two curved tile piece in tan. We don't get enough of that in as many colors as we should. And so I like that Lego is expanding that out. Uh, there's some very basic roof detailing, a, a shield piece as well in tan, which I really like. And then it just spins around nice and easy. This is not obviously a modular set. And I have a feeling it might take a bit of time, effort, and energy to actually turn a building like this into a solidified modular piece. At least being as tall as it is, you'd probably have to get two versions of this set. But anyways, there's a lot of things you can do with this. Namely, you can just kind of take a lot of this apart. You can play around with the space on the set. So we've these are basically just some uh, displays because this is kind of like a museum, I think, slash research center. So these are some fun stickers that show I guess the slices of life from the Jurassic period or whatever. I'm, I'm not sure if that's the Jurassic period. I'm, I'm bad with, with all that sort of uh, dino history, but we do have some nice bits and pieces of the interior. Let me zoom in. And this here has some of the better detailing, I think, from any of the sets, at least in terms of a lab. This is actually a very complete looking lab. This is a uh, little tooth piece. It's probably a tooth or a claw that's left over from a fossilized dinosaur. And it's in this really cool vial piece that kind of comes up on either side. And it looks like this is maybe under heat or it's under some type of x-ray here. So that's kind of a fun little bit. And then you can see a very clear build for a microscope. That would be the microscope. You can see the binocular pieces and another maybe infrared back glowing red light here. This shows a little bit more DNA. You can see that tooth piece or the claw piece, the same, the same type of Lego piece that's in there. And that's really nice. It just feels so complete. There is a sink for maybe sterilizing or incubating. It could be a container that holds an egg. In that basket there is an actual egg. So maybe you put the egg in there and this is a heat lamp and it can incubate a dinosaur egg. So they're definitely growing and or researching with dinosaurs and splicing their DNA up, which is just part of the entire Jurassic World lore. And we've got a few different testing chambers, one in red, one in uh, one in trans clear. Those are just jewel pieces turned upside down, but I have a feeling they might be cultures or something like that. So there's just so much of, a, of, a, of an experimentation and just completeness to the lab. Usually lab stuff will just say, oh, it's a computer and a, and a thing next to a computer, but there's a lot of different things. We have incubation, we have test tubes, we've got a basket for eggs, we've got a capsule that holds onto a tooth, as well as a microscope, and then, and then the actual analytical computer. So there's a ton of stuff in here, and I really like that. It's the sort of the centerpiece of this entire, of this entire estate, and, uh, and, I, and I think that was a good choice. Now I suppose we're just going up a floor and not going down first. We do have a door that opens out onto the balcony if you'd like. There is a little fold out bed. Interesting, it's got this fold function. I'm not entirely sure why it folds. Maybe you can hide a minifigure under there. I have a feeling there might be something like that. Yep, that would be my guess. So this is probably something that plays out within the movie itself. I'm just going to assume, spoilers, not spoilers. Ah, she's stuck back there. Hold on, I can get her. Oh, she's going through, where is she? Oh, she's fine. No, she's fine. Nobody heard her. Anyways, uh, yeah, then there's a very fun little build for a lamp. Let's see if I can zoom in. Nice, right? So we've got a nice little map, an umbrella, 
And then this is fun. This is actually a black, I can just break it out. I just liked this. It's a little bit funny looking, but I like the black sausage piece and the, and the dark red, the dark red dot here that's got the hole in there. That's actually not a particularly common part, but you can kind of tell that it's one of those older library lamps, or at least that's what it reminds me of. And okay, let's move to the bottom. Not too much here in the bottom floor. In general, you can tell that there really isn't that much that sticks out on any single floor, but this is nice. It's a golden cup piece. This is one of those newer leaf elements and then also a slightly newer flower element. They're, they match up on both sides and the doors don't open outwards. They actually open inwards. There's just some couple of, uh, of do golden doorknobs there. And then if I zoom out just a little bit, either side of the estate, can still be seen here. They can actually come out and you could you can set it up in different ways, but basically this is a fun little build that makes up these sort of fancy vases and then nothing on either side. You can set up mini figs, you can see them through the windows. And uh, yeah, it's actually kind of a fun, a fun bit of building here because let me show you what you can do next. Now that you know that these chunks can be kind of taken out and removed from the building, you can actually, if you would like, you can attach it back onto there, but then you can reattach more. You can you can keep extending out the side of the building. And I have a feeling, I, I just have a, a, a an inkling feeling that maybe the estate goes quite a bit wider on either side. And even, even now you can even take this apart again. And if you wanted to, you could even attach some of the other internal details in there. Maybe remove that pin, put it up there. So you can get you can get more and more of the estate to kind of keep connecting and you can just sort of play around with the area as much as you like which is which is just fun i mean obviously this isn't going to be sitting in a modular city anytime soon without heavy augmentation but the fact that you can just play around with the space have them detached from each other or you can just start playing around with the combinations of attachments is pretty nice it's pretty it's pretty fun that you sort of get to play around with that space also, I totally saved the best part of this set for last, and that is the skull, one of the, I'm assuming, fossilized skulls of a Triceratops. So cool, you can see the mouth opening and closing. That is a really, really fun combination of pieces that's so recognizable for this type of dinosaur. I didn't really realize it, or it's not something I really thought about until I built it, and I said, wow, that really does, <laughs> really does look like a Triceratops. Uh, fun connection points that make up this angle that we get with these curved plates here, the rounded over corners. And uh, yeah, just the inside of a couple of, uh, of dot pieces, three, three horns, really, really good build. This is probably one of my favorite single small builds from the entire Jurassic World line. All right, uh, this is the very end of the review. I just wanted to say, yes, that it comes with a little baby dinosaur, forgot to mention that. And Owen also has a motorbike. Uh, Conclusion, this is definitely a little bit higher in terms of part to price ratio, as in it's a bit expensive in terms of, uh, you know, all the different types of pieces that you get. The Indoraptor is a very cool, very unique dinosaur, though, that is going to be something that I think people like a lot from the set. It's just so evil and menacing looking. Um, and in general, though, I would say that the play aspect of this set is very minimal in terms of action functions. There's definitely some action in the set. Um, you can play around with just like the characters and there's one or two things on the inside of the, of the mansion that lets you kind of play around with like hiding characters and stuff. But there is no big destruction stuff. You're not blowing out all the windows. You're not um, dropping things on top of dinosaurs. There's no lava effects. There's no launching functions. So this isn't, I don't think in a, I don't think this is gonna grab maybe the younger builders that really wanna just play around and really, really play. I think the play aspect of this set very much comes from how you manipulate the space. So both of these smaller sort of tower pieces, they can get moved around on either side of the build. And these two little modular display pieces, I think they look nice, but the play aspect is just gonna be kind of playing around with this space and not so much the action of playing and kind of dodging and destroying and all that stuff that maybe some other younger people especially, I think, would be really, really into when getting a Jurassic World set. Ultimately, I'd say this is cool, but uh, probably probably weak on the play side and definitely not your best part to price ratio. 
Oh, hey everybody, hope you enjoyed that video. I just wanted to pop in really quick and say that we do have a web store, BrickVault.toys, uh, that sell instructions for super high quality mocks uh, that are built by incredibly talented designers. So that is the first link in the description below. And also there's other videos too. We've got other things if you wanna watch that. All right, thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time at BrickVault.